today is the day the Lord has made. It's a beautiful fall day. I am still here with my mother, helping her get through some old nasty COVID pneumonia. She's doing much better. Thank you, Lord. So we're on her front porch today, but I'm so excited about this lesson. This is a lesson that teaches us so much. And so we're going to dig into Proverbs chapter 4, verses 19 through 27. We're going to finish up chapter 4 today. And our key verse is verse 23. And this is a verse I quote on a regular basis. And um, if anything to myself, it's a wonderful life verse. But anyway, if you have not scored, I want to encourage you to take a few moments, get in God's presence, and you will be ready for this lesson. Here's our joke for the day. <laughs> I love that joke. Okay. We're going to pray together and ask the Lord to be with us and guide us and impart the wisdom we need. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this word of God today. Thank you for this beautiful weather, for the gift of wisdom and knowledge that you have given to us, the ability to see with eyes that look beyond the normal average um, life. And we're just asking that you would impart the wisdom we need to be able to make wise decisions, to be able to see things the way you do in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20 through 27, it says, My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. I know you may be getting tired of the father constantly reminding the son to listen well. But the important thing about life is if you are a good listener, then you are a good learner. So it says, let them not depart from thine eyes, keep them in the midst of thine heart. Everybody make a fist. That's about the size there of your heart. Put it right here. If you can see where your heart, your what people call your ticker, and it, it's what keeps you alive. And I've got a video about that, but I want us to read a little bit more and then we're gonna show this little introduction to a very important, most important organ in your body. It says, let them not depart from thine eyes, keep them in the midst of thine heart for they are life. It's your resource. It's what keeps you spiritually alert. It keeps you alive in making good decisions. And to those that find them in health to all their flesh. Now, here's the key verse today, y'all. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Okay, I want to stop for just a moment in our reading, and I want to show you a short video about your physical heart. Welcome to the heart. The heart is essentially a big muscle that's constantly at work. It beats 100,000 times a day, close to 40 million times a year, and over 2 billion in a lifetime. With each of those beats, a third of a cup of blood moves through the heart. In a day, that's up to 2,000 gallons. Any other engine would break down under such loads, but not the incredible human heart. Think of your heart like a big food delivery center. It gets fresh supplies from the lungs, we'll call them our local farmers. Your red blood cells are like delivery trucks, taking supplies throughout the city, also known as your body. It gets to where it needs to go via the roads that are your blood cells. They lead to your organs, tissues, and down to the cells. All demand a constant supply of oxygen. And the heart makes a beat, a valve opens like a gate, and we go from the left atrium down into the bigger left ventricle. The heart makes one more beat and pushes the blood out. We make an exit through the huge foot-long aorta. And we're now officially going away from the heart via the artery highway. Hey, don't worry, we'll be back soon enough. We're rushing fast through the body, delivering this oxygen supply to every organ, muscle, tissue, and cell. Oxygen delivery for the liver. <laughs> Please sign here. I've got an oxygen package for the kidneys. Here you go. Our tunnel gets smaller and smaller as we get off the main artery highway, onto smaller arterial street, and finally into tiny alley-like capillaries. The heart pumps harder, and the blood pressure's increasing. Ooh, hold on tight! All the citizens of this town get a belly full of the good stuff. 
wipe their mouths, if they had one, and hand over carbon dioxide like you'd throw a chicken bone down on your plate after eating all the meat. Yep, the oxygen to carbon dioxide exchange doesn't just happen in your lungs, it's going on at the cellular level. That being said, we now have a truck full, <clears throat> I mean, blood full of CO2. What's next? Well, we need to get back on the vein freeway toward the heart. Just like we did in the lungs, it starts in the capillaries and our tunnel gets bigger from there. You might have noticed that these roads all look the same. But any anatomy textbook would have you believe that veins are blue and arteries are red. Nope, blood's always red. It might just be a little brighter when it's full of oxygen and moving through the arteries. But that blue, or sometimes green hue you see through your skin, is because of the effect of light waves. Shorter blue ones are more easily reflected back to your eye. Anyway, all these roads, 60,000 miles of them, enough to wrap around the Earth twice, lead to and from one place in this city, the heart. All right, I know you enjoyed that. Yeah, I did. I enjoyed that so much. Um, that tells us the importance of what our heart does for us. It's our most important organ. It is, we cannot live without it. There are people that have had heart problems, um, heart transplants, different things like that. But a healthy life, a healthy lifestyle, for the most part, will help you have a healthy heart. Now, I know there's instances where things like that can go wrong, but truthfully, if you are intentional with your health, your heart will be stronger, okay? And that includes exercise and all the stuff that goes with it. But that's not what the lesson is about today. The lesson today is that we, our heart in, in the Bible, when you see this, um, keep that heart with all diligence. The Hebrew uh, word for heart means the location of knowledge. It is the birthplace or the beginning of all your decisions. Jesus said this, O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak of good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. It's that central location of knowledge. What we have placed, and we would probably come closer to saying your brain, your thoughts, because that's all connected. And it's really interesting how the health of your brain and your heart physically are connected as well. Um, so the Hebrew for heart really means the central location of knowledge and the birthplace of decisions the heart of the matter you've heard that said before jesus said for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks have you ever known someone that will just speak their mind they don't even have a filter on their mouth maybe you're like that i don't know sometimes i can be that way with certain people in my life but the truth is sometimes we spill out things that are not really good for those that are listening to us and we're telling what we're feeling we're telling our emotions are coming out and the truth is it's the very heart of how we've perceived that situation or that person and sometimes our perception or how we view things is not correct so Jesus is telling us that out of whatever's in the heart is going to come out of the mouth you, you have people that you maybe have a foul mouth. They're, they have cursing and lying and different things like that. It's because their heart has an issue. Their heart has an issue. Matthew 15 and 18 says, But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. Jesus was telling the Pharisees this, that um, that it's, it's not what goes in the mouth. It's what comes out that defiles or causes to sin causes to have foolishness and those things if we're having trouble with what we say and that's really easy because we're all naturally born with that tendency that tongue trying to tame it oh it's the hardest thing ever if we're struggling with that we really need to go back and make sure that our heart is right that our heart is pure our motives are right our priorities are in place and we have to reevaluate before we speak if you choose to have in your lifetime healthy habits that produce a healthy heart, exercise, diet, uh, all the different things that you can do to help yourself, um, and your heart is strong, it's doing its job, it's pumping that blood, your entire body receives that blood. And the more that you exercise and move, 
It brings oxygen to your brain, to your organs, just as we saw on the short video. In the spiritual realm, in the, the unseen heart that we have, that Solomon is talking about, we exercise ourselves in wisdom, in knowledge, and understanding. Exercise ourselves in the Word of God, in praying, and, and asking God to impart wisdom. Those are things that are bringing that oxygen to our decisions and oxygen to our perspective. Things that change us to look at people around us in a better way, to see life for what it truly is, to live for eternity, not for just the moment. So as we're gaining wisdom and growing in wisdom, we're asking God, we're, we're asking God, Lord, exercise me, exercise my heart, help me to see what I can't see. Now, as the Bible says to exercise yourself unto godliness, because I believe that it brings life to everything about you. It brings blessing and favor. Read it again. Keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Verse 24 ties in right here, heart and mouth. Put away from the forward mouth and perverse lips put far from me. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you. We live in a culture that anything you wanna say goes. I believe that if Solomon were living in our time, he would tell his son, don't watch those old movies. Don't, don't listen to that kind of music because you are creating a culture for your heart. You're, you're creating an appetite, an appetite for what your thoughts are gonna be, for what your heart, your core belief system, everything is influenced by what you see. It goes in through your eyes, in through your ears, into your heart and then out of your mouth. You have the choice to have a, a heart that's right before God or a corrupt heart. And the ones that have made the effort, that have put the effort into making sure their heart is right. Uh, we're not talking about pharisaical self-righteousness. We're not talking about that. Only God can give us his righteousness. But we're doing our part to guard our heart. He's saying to keep your heart with all diligence and that word means to make sure that it doesn't get away and that it's safe from attack, to keep something. For instance, I want you to think about the most valuable thing that you own. For some of you, it might be that chocolate cake in the refrigerator. <laughs> that is yours, it has your name on it. I want you to think about how valuable that is to you and how important it is to guard that from someone getting it, someone eating it, someone destroying it. Um, for my boys, it would be Legos. They love Legos. My son has this major Lego and he does not let everybody look at it. He does not bring it down for us all to sit on the table and just, you know, mess around with it because it's so fragile. He guards it. He keeps it. He protects it from being, you know, tore up or falling apart. And, and this is the same mindset of this verse that Solomon is saying, guard and protect your heart. Guard and protect your spirit. Don't let those negative influences from the world cause you to be corrupt, to corrupt your heart, because what's in here is going to come out here. Verse 25 says, let thine eyes look on and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Okay, here you go. So we talked about what influences our heart is what we see, what we hear. It goes down and influences our heart, and then it comes, whatever's in our heart is going to come out of our mouth. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left hand. Remove thy foot from evil. Solomon is warning. He is giving instruction. Years ago, when I was probably 10 years old, we had a little dog named Bunny and she was beautiful and white and um, one day we were getting ready to get in the car to go to school and somehow Bunny got outside and as we were about to get in the car Bunny ran out in the road and a big truck ran right over her and and took her life instantly and that was a very hard day for us and we wished so much that we would have been mindful of where she was and kept her in that house. That's really similar how life is. 
there's a lot that we can't change, but one thing we can change is what we allow in our ears, our eyes, going into our heart and then coming out of our mouth. We can choose what influences us. There's a lot on YouTube, there's a lot on social media. Just scrolling through, when you scroll through, um, there's no telling what you can see. Those images never, never leave. You have to guard your heart, and that's by guarding your eyes and your ears. There's an old song that says, be careful little ears what you hear, be careful little eyes what you see. There's a father up above who is looking down in love, so be careful little eyes what you see. I want us to pray one more time and ask God to give us that guardianship that we need over our heart today. Lord, we thank you for this valuable lesson that you have given us. And we are asking right now in Jesus' name that we would see the need to guard our heart. Just as we saw the need to guard our dog when it was too late, God, I pray for these students that it would not be too late that they would be so mindful of what they allow, so mindful of what they listen to, of what they watch, of who they're with, that God, they, they honor and please you because that's the road to wisdom. And I thank you for giving us this timely word today for someone. And I'm trusting you to make the difference in Jesus' precious name. Thank you all so much for watching. One last thing. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. God bless. Have a wonderful Monday.